God of heaven and earth, who come in close and you made us yours. Equip us by your Spirit to confess our sin and grace our forgiveness. And see the way you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. With honesty of heart, let us confess our sin.
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And also with you.
But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and bounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishment. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head and save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm and attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in the night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from the left, and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing Psalm 145.
striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them there is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
never too late to bring someone back to the church. It's never too late to teach somebody to pray. While we are here on this side of the grave, it's not too late for them and for us. Take today's gospel of Matthew. Within it, the writer shares with us Jesus' parable of the vineyard owner who bargains for laborers for his vineyards at various times of the day. Now we could, I suppose, look at this vineyard owner as a union busting person and his unfair practice of hiring seeming like oppression to the, uh, the marginalized worker. I mean, we could compare them, compare this to the many undocumented workers here today living in the United States and to those who would hire them below minimum wage because they those people not have any legal choices. And although this is a problem, one which our church should have eyes and ears and hearts and prayers upon, I'm not led to, at least at this time, to address this concern for society and the church. However, I do surmise in 2023, I see that landowner, the landowner, rich, dressed in his finest, that fat cat sitting back with a bowl full of cream on her and scraps of those beautiful lights. But as always, when we look at the gospel, especially the world behind the gospel, our view is clouded, missing a few key pieces. Now, what the narratives may seem like a bit of a wage for a whole day's work, but it was a common wage for the day of labor. Mind you, not a slave, but someone who chose to work either off the land or wherever work might be done. The generous would be enough to cover food and wine for, for the common man in this family. Him was included for a day's work with maybe just a little bit left over. Jerusalem even had a gathering place for these people in the marketplace where jobs met the workers. Think of it as an early temp agency. That's where they would go. So what the landowner did and how the people responded was the norm of that society in the first century Jerusalem. The landowner first negotiates with the first group. The wage is agreed upon with the marriage. So now they're sent into the fields to begin working. Let's say for argument's sake, they're harvesting. So they're out there harvesting. They're planting their hair. Put them in their set and then move them on. You ever have to go out and pick blackberries? Well, it's in, the timing is everything, isn't it? Berries have to be right. This would be a nice day out. Nobody wants to pick in the rain. You don't want it to be too hot. So you get your little pail, your little bucket, and you go out there and you start picking. Oh, I forgot one key point. You want to be the first there. You want them first. You see, that's when all the good things are still there, right? You see, if you're not the first there, all the good ones are the branches of the tramp. Or maybe the bearers have a beach. You need to keep that in the back of your brain for a moment. We're going to go back to that. You see, that first crew that was hired, they're getting paid for a day's work, which they all agree. But they're also get the privilege of being the first to pick that tree. It's not very hard work. You can see the coppers right there standing in front of you. Watch as a bridge right there. Not very hard to fill your sack that way, is it? It's not hard to get noticed for working, producing great results for the field manager. Look at me, I'm a champion great picker. You should hire me. So yeah, it's not fun, but it's not particularly hard for them either. The landowner, no, no, the field manager, probably, probably, like, looks out and says, well, we're going to need more people to get this done around sundown. So about 9 a.m., they go back out, and they bargain again. This time, they're told, the workers are told, go, go work in the field, and I will treat you fairly. And more laborers head to the field. He does this again at 12 o'clock. He does it again at 3 o'clock in the heat of the day. 
And when the daytime hours are starting to wane, and yet we are still found and still sent to work. And finally, at five o'clock, they hire the last that works. The believer. You know what a believer is? Well, in the book of Ruth, we hear about the In this term, it's used in the gospel as well when we speak of vineyards and of grain. Boaz, in the story of Ruth, at least, instructs his field manager not to clean the field so that Ruth can come behind and get grain for her sacks. Grain that was left behind by the other harvesters. That is the work of the gleaner. They clean the field. They had a hard job going behind the main harvesters and picking up what was left behind. It's slow work and it was very hard, especially after four other crews had walked through there. Think of our very back in Murphy. After four different people had been there to take, and you need two cords of fresh berries. You could lift your leaves and lines. You'd have to look down low at some much higher. Under the trampled vines, those that got stepped on, those close to the ground. That last group of workers would have had to work hard, if not harder, than the first. And they wouldn't have had the high yields that they could sit and brag about. But the first group was the men of the left. Sadly, it's a great cleaner than the other workers in the field.
don't know what to do with the folks in our if you don't know the Our Father by heart and have to sit there and read it line by line. Yes. You see the guy on the little cross here. This guy here. He died for them too. No matter when they came to the field. This has been revealed by the same Spirit that revealed the Father's love for us. To us.
as the body of Christ. Let us offer our response to faith as we affirm the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Son of the Lord, who was a seed of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and died, was crucified. Sherry Sterner, Greg Fisher, Ted and his mother. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Jesus Christ. 
this is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave him all the drink, saying, This cup is a new cup of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of my sin. Do this for remembrance of me. We're given assurance for the Lord's presence through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Now we bring to you the same bread of life, the same cup of blessing, that you may be strengthened through your participation in the body of Christ. Lord, remember your kingdom, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to the rest of Thy kingdom, the power, and the glory.
We're still hot.